So the second expert paper looked at plaque-induced gingival conditions and the critical challenges here were could we define plaque-induced gingivitis on both an intact and a reduced periodontium? Um, how did we define the reduced periodontium? Well, I've, I've sort of explained in the previous slide how we went about doing that. But then importantly, what were the predisposing factors or the local risk factors for the development of plaque-induced gingivitis? What were the systemic risk factors or the modifying factors that might alter the course or the rate at which that inflammation developed? Um, and then most importantly, could we reduce the number of categories of gingivitis in the 2017 system? It's important to reiterate that really the first time gingivitis was ever, was ever um, classified or categorized was in the 1999 system. It hadn't been done prior to that. And in fact, prior to this 2017 classification system, nobody had ever really attempted to classify health. So that was also an important uh, innovation to this classification. So if we take this patient, for example, uh, this patient has no attachment loss. They have no bone loss. The tissues are largely pink and largely healthy. In the lower incisor region, there are three or four papillae that have signs of inflammation to an experienced periodontist or an experienced practitioner. So is this a case of clinical health with a few sites of inflammation, or is this a case of gingivitis? That was a real dilemma. So um, when we looked at predisposing factors and modifying factors, we regarded the local risk factors as our predisposing factors, and you'll be very familiar with these. These are things that will encourage the dental plaque biofilm to accumulate. So various tooth anatomical factors or uh, subgingival restoration margins that will retain plaque below the gingival margin. And also oral dryness, um, not xerostomia itself, because that is, if you like, a, um, it's, it's a, a symptom the patient suffers from. It's not necessarily a dry mouth. They feel as if they have a dry mouth, but the saliva flow and the moisturization of the mouth might be quite normal. So oral dryness is a better term, and that can arise due to a reduction in flow of saliva, or due to, if you like, uh, a thickening of the saliva, a reduction in quality of saliva. Um, and both of those can lead to a reduced natural removal of the plaque biofilm from the teeth and therefore be a local risk factor for the development of gingivitis and periodontitis. Our systemic factors, systemic risk factors or our modifying factors are in fact characteristics of an individual that affect, if you like, um, the rate of progression or the character of the inflammation. They don't necessarily trigger that inflammation. So classically, they would be things like smoking, uh, metabolic factors such as a high uh, sugar intake or hyperglycemia, various nutritional factors such as reduced micronutrient levels such as vitamin C, various drugs or pharmacological agents, or elevations in the sex steroid hormones during puberty or during pregnancy. Um, or maybe even with certain types of traditional oral contraceptive pill, they can affect the inflammatory response in a pre-existing gingival inflammation and similarly with various uh, hematological conditions. 